everyone, I am Amy Astro and welcome back to my channel. It's great to see everybody here and if you're new here and you like this kind of content, uh, consider subscribing below and don't forget to hit that alert bell so you know when I upload new Astro related material. Now you're going to find out that many videos on this channel are viewer requested and this video is no different. We had several viewers ask me the question recently on how do I generate a four panel mosaic? Well, this week I'm gonna show you how to do that and we're gonna jump over to the computer and get right on it. guys we are over here on the computer and if you can guess by this image we are going to process the heart nebula today the heart nebula is over there in Cassiopeia and this time of year is actually a pretty good time to go chasing her now this image I took in uh, let's see I believe it was October two years ago and this image is my first image that I attempted to take with a monochrome camera and this was a very ambitious image for me to try to take as my first one. And I honestly do not know what I was thinking. But I took this image with RGB and HA and I sat on it for almost two years. Because every time I tried it, I couldn't figure out how to process it as a four panel mosaic with four filter changes, okay? So let me, let's talk about how to approach a four panel mosaic with all of these filters. Now at first I tried to take each filter, I took my red and then I took the four panels with red and I tried to make a single mosaic out of those. And that didn't work so good, but my, I would get like two of the four filters that would create a four panel mosaic but two wouldn't, or there was always something that was giving me an error message and just pure frustration, okay? And then I came back a few months down the road and I, I rethought about it. If I can't do a four panel mosaic of each filter and then stack everything at the end, what if I took each panel and treated it as a single image? So with that thinking, I took my RGB and I processed it all the way through up until I had just gotten through with my automatic background extraction, okay? And then I stopped on that one panel. And then I took another panel and processed it through as an RGB right after my um, automatic background extraction. <laughs> And I did that for all four panels. And then I had four panels that had some variation of coloring that just looked funny, brightness, darkness between the images. So I went back and I did a linear fit on all the images. And that's where you see them right now. They've all been linear fitted to each other. So they're all of the same brightness factor. So when I do merge these, they will look like they belong together and I won't have one square that's really bright and one square that's really dark because doing that is an absolute nightmare in the final processing. So what we're going to do today is now that we have these images in this RGB state and don't forget I said I had HA and I'll do HA totally separate as its own mosaic. That was the one time I was able to do that. And you'll see back there, I have a video on iHeartHA. It is this image, and then the HA for this image, I show you how to combine them after the fact as they are two separate images. But what I didn't tell you back then is really it was a four panel mosaic, okay? So let's get started and we're gonna work, we're gonna work with just the top two images right now. 
Now what I have learned was I couldn't register all four of these together because I would get three successful and when I go in and I would try to register that fourth, I would have these curvatures along the edges and all that curve would prevent that final image from registering. So we're going to attack this as two panels and make a two panel mosaic. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom as a two panel mosaic. And then once those two panels are individual mosaics, we will treat those as a mosaic and bring those together. So we're going to run through these process three times. We're just going to attack the top, the bottom, and then glue them all together. Okay. But first we need to create our template and we're going to do that with process Come down here to image registration, star alignment. I went ahead and I gave this a reset just so you can see everything that we do. And we're going to grab a reference image. It can be either one of these images. It does not matter which one. But for right now, I'm going to grab the top left image and say OK. Now, the registration model is going to be thin plate spline. And we're going to do distortion correction. OK. And then working mode is going to be register union mosaic. We're going to generate our masks and we will do the frame adaptation. All right. The target images we will leave blank, format blank, output blank, star detection we'll leave that blank also, star matching, the ransack tolerance. I'm going to take that all the way up to eight to give us a better chance of everything registering. We'll minimize this. So since my reference image is my top left, I'm going to grab my new instance and bring it over here to the top right. Let go and I'm going to let it process. All right, that's done processing and this is what the template would look like. You can see that we have our top left here is nice and square, but the top right had to be put in kind of at an angle to get this uh, to line up. Now imagine if you were to do this with the third one and the fourth one, you've got this nice straight edge for you to line up to for this third one, but when it comes in, it's going to create an angle also and you've got this angle, which is why that fourth one would never, you know, line up for me. But I'm going to minimize this mask because I really don't need it. It's just there for us to look at and uh, really we could turn that feature off if we wanted to. But this is my template that I will register both of the top left and the top right too. Don't show them your butt. Mm -hmm. You see this? Got cuteness alert here. I don't show them. All right, now that I've got a cat on my desk, and he stays just low enough for this camera. But here is my template image, and it looks great, it really does. But with this image, let's call it our uh, top RGB mosaic. And I'm gonna put a T at the end so I know it's a template just to remind myself later, because in, in a little bit, we're going to have a lot of files up on our screen. So let's just say, OK, I don't need to save this or anything. I won't use it again, you know, when this is all said and done. Now we need to go through our star alignment again, but this time we're going to register them to the images. So my view is now going to be this new view that we just created, the top RGB mosaic T. Say OK. We will leave the registration model exactly the same, but we're gonna change this working mode from register union mosaic to register match images. And that's typically what we use when we're, when we're processing our, our star alignments. I'll leave everything else exactly the same. I won't change anything. But now I'm gonna grab a new instance and I'm gonna drop it on the top left, let it process, and when it's done processing, I will do the exact same thing with the new instance on the top right. So we'll be back right as soon as those are done. All right, frame one done. Let's move this registration mask out of the way because we don't need it. Excuse the cat butt. All right, here is our registered image. You can see one over here and then the, the blank space 
is where the top right will go eventually. But I'm just going to go ahead and do a save as because I need this file saved for the next step that we're going to do. Okay. And let's see, this is where it is. This is top left registered. And I'm navigating through a cat that's right here on my desktop, which is kind of tricky. Let's see. We'll bend this down. Let's see if you can see him right here. Can you say hi, Orion? And I had to put the keyboard in my lap. So this is always fun. The saving process seems to take a little bit longer than I would like it to, but no big deal. Once this is saved, we're gonna start on a lot, registering the top right. All right, and the cat leaves when I stop vetting them, of course. I can close this file because I've already saved it. Now I've got my star alignment. Let's grab the new instance and do the stop top right and start this process over again. That last one processing took about five minutes. All right, here is the other panel registered. Move him up, minimize. And there he is right there. I'm not gonna stretch him just because it takes too long to do so. I know, color me lazy, but I don't need to see it. I've got a general idea he's there. Let's do a file save as. Let me grab my keyboard, because once again, I've got a cat sitting in front of me. And let's do save in the directory. And that's all there is to it. Now we're going to repeat the exact same steps with the bottom two images, all right? What you doing? Hmm? You scratch yourself on my keyboard? Mm-hmm, yeah. It's a good scratching post. All right. Let's close this file. We don't need them anymore. I'm gonna minimize this template. Push them up over here. And I will close these two files as I don't need them anymore. Now let's start the process down here with star alignment. We'll grab the bottom left. Say OK. We'll change this back to register union mosaic drag and drop a new instance onto the bottom right. All right, so we've now got the template for our bottom. We'll move the mask out of the way. Here is our template. And I will just rename it so I can find it easier. Let's just call this our bottom. And I'll put a T at the end. Say OK. So let's change our view in star alignment to the bottom mosaic say okay and change our register union mosaic to register match images so we can um, register and we'll grab the new instance and drop it on the bottom left and then we'll save it and come back and do the same thing on the bottom right all right we've got one registered here Let's go ahead and do a file save as to it. Put it in our directory. Say OK. All right, and we can go ahead and close it as we don't need it on our screen anymore. And that was the bottom left that we just did. So now let's do the same thing to the bottom right. Drag a new instance, drop it on the bottom right, and let it go. Here we go, and the last one is now registered. So again, we save this to our hard drive. And when it's done saving, we'll close this file and we'll start the next phase. close these out now as I don't need them anymore and we will minimize this template and let's start the next phase 
The next part, we're going to actually start gluing everything together. All right, let's go under process. It's uh, image integration, gradient merge mosaic. Let's go ahead and give it a reset. And we're gonna add our files, but we're only gonna do two at a time. So let's do our top registered. And there's the two, the top left and the top right. We'll say okay. We're gonna change the type of combination to overlay. I'm gonna bump this shrink radius up to like five and the feather radius up to 60. Now this feather radius is the gradient between the two images that help everything line up. And we're just gonna say apply. All right, let's take a look at what our new top image looks like. All right, there we go. And it merged exactly how we thought with one of them up here at an angle. So let's give it a new identifier, right mouse click, identifier. Let's call this top. Now let's save them and uh, set them aside. I'm going to go ahead and save it also. Alright, so let's go ahead and start on the bottom piece. We'll go back to Gradient Merge Mosaic. I'm going to clear out those two files and we're going to go grab the bottom registered files. Here's bottom right and bottom left. And we'll say open. We'll still stick with the overlay and we'll do a radius shrink of 5 and a feather radius of 60 and apply global and let it run. Alright, and this is our brand new bottom. Let's take a look at these seams and make sure they're okay. Yep, not too bad. Right here has got me just a little bit concerned. But I'm going to process this through and just see where it lands. So let's go ahead and change the identifier to this as our bottom. And we'll do a file and save as to it so we don't lose it. All right, so here's our bottom and here is our top. Let's get them both to fit on the screen here. And now we need to get these two to merge together as a single image. But you're going to see that I've got some angles and some square edges here and they're just not going to match up very well with this one up on the top. So what we need to do is to crop each one of these images so they're square all the way around. And we're going to go to Process Geometry Dynamic Crop and I will go ahead and draw a rectangle inside the image but not select any of the black on the outside and what we're cutting off is just that 20 percent worth of overlap that we had planned for when we did our image session all right so the top has now been cropped let's go ahead and crop the bottom This is done cropping, I will save both files again. All right, so now that I've got some nice square edges on these images, what I will need to do is to create a template image for these to align to, and then we will do a full star alignment. So let's grab this first one and go back to star alignment. And let's select the view as our top. say OK. We'll still use the thin plate spline and we're going to change this back to register union mosaic and this is for us to do our template. 
And now that since I'm using the top as my reference, I grab a new instance and bring it down to the bottom and let it process. All right, so it looks like we are done with our template. And this is both images put together as a template for us to align the top and the bottom to it. And I'll give it a quick stretch so you can see what it looks like. All right, and here is our template. So now once again, we'll go through the star alignment process and we're gonna actually register our images. And our new reference is gonna be this brand new one that we just created. So let's find it. It's the bottom mosaic. And we will change this back to register match images. And we will grab the new instance and drag it onto the top. And when it's done, we will drag another new instance down to the bottom. Right, now that we have both the top and the bottom panel have been successfully registered, let's go ahead and register, um, well, let's merge the two of them together. So I'm going to grab the, where are you? I grab the bottom two and the top two open them. We'll overlay, we'll shrink radius 5, feather 6, and run global. Alright, so our image has finished merging here. Let's take a quick peek at it. And hopefully everything's stitched together well. And we can just move on with processing. There we go. There's our finished image. And I'm a little concerned why I have some color variations going on with these panels, but this tutorial is not how to fix that. It is more about how to stitch these images together. All right, so what we have here is our merged image, the first step. This is what it looked like after we did some color calibration and some green SCNR removal. This is what it looked like the last time that I processed it several months ago. Now you can see it looks different in every single version. No matter how many times you process an image, I promise you it will never look the same twice, no matter how much I want it to. And this is what the finished project, the finished product looked like. Now, before you say it, yes, this image has been quite overbaked, but just so you can see, it was salvageable. It doesn't look that bad. Um, I'll probably try to reprocess it again and just trying to soften it out, but you get the general idea. This is a four panel mosaic. It was done with a mono camera RGB combined with HA. And if you want to see how I combine the HA, there is a video I've got, uh, I sent out back in February. It was a I heart HA. And I do have some other videos that show you how to merge images from a monochrome camera into an RGB image. 